Thank you. That's a stabilizer heifer calf and it's out of this cow here. I think it's probably the biggest news that I have ever had. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. You'll never guess what we're up to. The good Lord has gifted us one day, just one, of beautiful dry and still weather because it has been chucking out with rain or extremely windy here for probably the last four to six weeks and we've just not been able to get any fur onto our wheat which is what I'm stood in right now and I couldn't get my second dressing on the winter barley so I've just been plastering it on. We're still super busy calving although we've had a little bit of an easier weekend which was quite nice and dad is now currently in the yard um, mucking out one of the cattle yards so that we've got somewhere to put cows and calves because it is still wet out here. I know I've just said that it's a lovely day today, but it's forecast to rain the rest of the week. It has rained all weekend. It's rained for the last God knows how long and we can't get cows down the meadows and it's driving me mad. So we're going to have to put more cows and calves inside. So that is why he's cleaning out that shed. But does anybody else find that as soon as they start doing stuff in the spring, they discover things like this? It's had like all year to fall down and it waits until you get to the spring and then it's going to just be in the corn. Might be able to get in here with the buggy if it comes dry at some point and get that chopped up actually because it's not too big. So you usually get like a full tree just as another, actually I can see a branch over there. I'm actually quite proud of this wheat even though I'm not big into my arable farming. This looks lovely and this isn't even the best one. The best one's that one over there but I'm actually really chuffed for this wheat. I think it looks really good. It's after beans. Just looks nice. Now I know I said it's been wet and it has but we are traveling really well on here. And one of the reasons for that is because of the direct drilling. Someone told me that your roots are only ever as deep as your last cultivation, which means like if you plow in, obviously you can might get like eight or 12 inches of depth in those roots before you hit any sort of hard ground. When you're direct drilling, especially with that Claydon, we're working this strip here where the seed is, but this at the side is hard. So that the third spinner and the tractors, when they're on the tram lines, just, sit on top. Worst thing is it's just a little bit tacky but other than that it's, uh, it's going well. The other thing I've got to spread a bit of fertilizer on is this grass. Now I planted this grass last September. This field was arable silage last year and then I planted it with this grass lay. Um, what we did is we just disked it lightly and then drilled it in over the top. And this is a grass and clover lay and it's taken really well. I'm, I mean, look at it. I couldn't really have asked for more, to be honest. This is not a nice field at all, but it's doing really good. If I can have a look down here, you can see. We've got so much grass, it's super dense. Some clovers in here, look. We've got all sorts of white clover, only white clover, but just different sizes. You've got small and big and all that sort of stuff. And then we've got loads of different grasses. And it's quite a cool mixture of grass, actually. The idea with this field is that we get two really good cuts of silage, potentially three if the weather's right, but I'm guessing on two. And then we can actually bring this into the grazing block and use this for cows. It's quite late heading grass, so it will stay leafy like this for quite a while, which is good. That means it's good quality for the cows as well. 
and then we can graze this towards the end of the year and it should be down for about four years five years maybe if we get a good run on it and the intention is to use this grass and the clover to improve the soil in here because it's it's just not a very good field but I'll link the video from when we drilled it and I'll explain a bit more in that video about why I'm doing this but I'll link it up here somewhere so you can go and watch that if you haven't seen it already but I'm quite pleased with this considering this hasn't had any nitrogen yet it had a bit of manure on it before drilling but other than that yeah not a lot the plan is that if I can bring this back into rotation say late July August time something like that put some cows on it we'll be able to rest and increase our rotation length so we can go from sort of three to four week rotation up to maybe a five week rotation which would just help in that time of year when the grass isn't growing so well just trying to get some more sort of dual purpose things going on on farm and i'm hoping this will work out it's doing the job already so let's go spread a bit of fur on it and then we'll go and check out what dad's up to Now I must apologize because I didn't get around to showing this yesterday because we got real busy carving cows and we got late and I never got a chance to actually show you what dad was doing. But he was actually mucking out one of these cat yards. Thank you. So that we could sort out some more cows and calves because we haven't got any out to grass yet, as I've mentioned. We want to get some out and I think we'll probably get some out next week. We've been having a bit of a math up. But until then, we need to draw some more cows and calves out of yards and then we can actually shuffle the cows around because I think we can now get all the cows to carve into one yard because this middle yard here is our biggest yard and we've had quite a lot of cows carve out of there a lot of heifers carve out of there so we've pulled them out there's eight to come out of there today which means in this bottom yard that we can pull the cows and calves out of here so what the plan is is we're going to take all these cows out we'll take the cows and the calves out of those cows the ones that haven't carved will go in with these cows and then the cows and calves out of this yard and this yard can come into here we're also thinking of get having a session with the cows and calves that we've already carved and that are in the shed the other side of that wall because there's about 30 odd in there now and we're going to have them dehorning tagging with the second tag session going through them and then we're going to get a group ready to go out to thornton and hopefully they can go out to there next week i know we said that we weren't going to clean these sheds out because of the safety at point of view for cows but if we're not carving we know that what what will be going in here will be pretty safe and you can tell look how much lower they are from from where they were because you could just step across this wall it's crazy but one thing i have got to go and do is i've got to actually lime that i know we've got some bedding on the floor but that won't ma matter too much i've got to go in there with the agmini and lime it before i put calves in there look at these calves in here as well these guys are all coming out there's some these are all stabilizers these ones there's some heifers in here and there's some bulls. The crazy thing about my stabilizer bull, Yeti, is he got 42 cows and heifers in calf, which is all we put in with. We only get put in with 42. We've got every single one in calf, which is amazing work from him. But so far we've had 20 something calf and he's only given us five heifer calves, which I could just do with a few more, mate. But I've actually just had one over here. So I'll show you. Here is a stabilizer that has given birth this morning. We went for breakfast, we were a little bit late because we were sorting out cows and calves. And when we come back out, that thing was up and running around. That's a stabilizer heifer calf and it's out of this cow here. And it looks lovely, it's up lively, doing really well. It's had full belly on it, so can't complain. It's still wet as well. I actually really want to get some of these stabilizers on camera carving. The only trouble with that is they carve so quickly and so easily and they make no noise whatsoever that I just never see them do it. They just spit them out and you just never get a chance to actually see them it's almost frustrating but i'm not complaining about it because it makes my life well easy but it would be great to show you how quick they actually carve i just never get a chance to actually do it but i'm hoping what have we got left in here to carve there's few maybe if 
Fingers crossed we'll get one on camera. Anyway, let's go and sort these cows and calves out and have a shuffle around, try and get more into one yard. And at some point, let's just say this, I've got some massive news to share with you. And when I say it's massive, I think it's probably the biggest news that I have ever had. <laughs> Right, so that's all these guys in here. They all seem pretty happy, nice and chilled, lying down. Had another busy time because we've had a cow calf here. That's a Charolais out of an older blue cow. We've had this white heifer has given birth to a stabilizer cross bull calf, nice little red one. We've had another heifer calf that was here as well. And we've put that into the pens just to get it out of the way and separate them. And if you look over this wall, had another stabilizer car. It's a happy little calf, look. Up, oh, walking around. Mother's loving it as well, which is good. It's actually a bull calf, that one. I keep mentioning that we're not having as many stabilizer heifers as I'd like, because I was hoping to keep all the stabilizer heifers from the purebreds here, but also the first cross stabilizer heifers out of the blue heifers as well. Just trying to keep our own replacements from now on, and that's what I wanted. And it's frustrating me a little bit that we've had 20 odd, and I've only now had five, I think, heifer calves. <sighs> You know one of those isn't it but we're only about halfway through those heifers and stabilizers carving so maybe if we're lucky we'll get a few more heifer calves oh and while i think about it as for that big news well this is probably a fitting time to mention it because as i've just said trying to breed my own replacements this year and i've took it to the next level because kate and i are really proud to say that we're having a baby now we don't know what it is we don't know whether it's going to be a boy or a girl but it's going to be due early august which, I'm not gonna lie, not the best timing. Could have thought that one through a little bit more, but nonetheless, we're over the moon. Mum and dad are over the moon as well. They just can't wait. We're not gonna find out whether it's gonna be a boy or a girl. We just want the surprise. It's gonna be amazing, whatever. It's probably the biggest news that I'm ever gonna have, having our first child, but it seems fitting. We're talking about breeding our own replacements. I'm breeding some for my cows and I'm breeding some for myself. I can't wait to be a dad. It's something I've always wanted. Kate will be an amazing mum as well, so. Yeah, it's just going to be a big change. I'm sure it's going to be great. You guys have probably got kids, so you probably can tell me, but it'll be, it'll be amazing nonetheless. Anyway, on that mega, super massive, huge news, I'm going to go and run around after a few more cows and calves because it's hotting up, it's busy. Whatever you get up to this weekend, have a great one. Look after yourselves, and I will see you all very soon. Ta-da!